What is your fir- what was your first step as an entrepreneur? When you came up with your first idea, what did you do next? Did you hire a lawyer? Did you go on social media? Did you find sourcing uh, uh, places to produce the products that you came up? How did you start from zero to get where you are today? I love that that's Joe's first question because I think she knows the answer and I think every entrepreneur out there watching will be happy to hear that I failed when I first became an entrepreneur. Um, My dream was to always build a brand and to um, really be able to talk to the customer. So I came up with eight different ideas and I went to QVC and you meet in these little rooms and I pitched my ideas one times, two times, three times, four times, five times, six times, eight times. The eighth time is when they bit. So the first thing I did as an entrepreneur was fail and realize that no is an okay answer and it is just a jumping off board. No is not no. No is just take it and reframe it and love your idea so much that you're willing to pivot. Did you, when you went to QVC that first time, did you have the platform of the Today Show on which to build or as a as a launch pad? Or were you just Jill Martin, uh, like a thousand other entrepreneurs with an idea and eagerness? Who were you? Yes, then? I was I was in my 20s and I was doing all the different shows. I was a correspondent for but I didn't really have a solid platform. So I think a lot right. of people watching might say, oh, well, she's on TV, so she's able to reach. At that time, I didn't. I just had a really good idea. Like, I knew I wanted to solve problems in the organizational space. Um, I knew I wanted items that I was trying to tell stories, but the products weren't there to match. So I I knew it was problem solution. But no, I didn't have that platform. And of course, now that platform helps. But with the evolution of social media and the ability to create a shop online and places like Etsy and Amazon and all these places, especially social media where you could be direct to consumer. If I had that then, not to date myself, um, but it would have been a totally different world because I would have felt like I had the platform to tell the story. So I think that's the benefit entrepreneurs have now is how important social media is and how important it is to get a hold of it because it seems super overwhelming, especially for someone like me, who right. I had to learn about social media. When and to social that media really we go after. now. I, I just want to say one other thing. There, there are two things. You're a fantastic communicator. That's obvious to anybody who watches. Thank but you. Jill Martin, you are... You are as hard a working entrepreneur as I've ever seen. I mean, you integrate your business with your appearances on Today and everything else. People Thank need you to for know that. that. And you're going to see it in, in, in the, when you go on Jill's social media, you're going to see how much work it takes to create that social media persona. You've got 600,000 followers on Instagram. So I'm, I'm very excited to, to, to learn from you about your strategies for building a personal ba- brand. So here's a basic question. Which is the best social media platform to use to reach customers? Is there one and one alone or can it be any of them? Right. So I guess there's not uh, there's I I have a few answers to that. First of all, the first thing is you have to be. Thank you for saying that about being hardworking. I, you know, am not the smartest in the room, but I will never be beaten in work ethic. And you have to love your business so much and be so passionate about it that you can't sleep. So that's the first thing for anybody watching out there. If you don't believe it, nobody else will. And that leads me to social media because you have to be 100% authentic no matter which platform you choose. So let's say, let's use Instagram. I chose Instagram to be like all in on. Now I I dip into the other platforms, but Instagram is very visible. Put your brand front and center. It's really easy to use like Google, how to make a reel. It really walks you through it. So that's a great one. TikTok is great because it reaches a younger audience. And I mean, even my husband is so, who is 56 years old will get like, I saw it on TikTok, I'm buying it. TikTok reaches a younger audience, but also people are really willing to buy on TikTok. And Facebook, it reaches an older audience because Facebook was really what we all started on, but it's great for building a shop. So these are three places that you can dip into that you could just Google the best ways to do it 
and really start building. But I have to say on all the fabric of all of this and the thread is being so authentic to your brand. That's so important in terms of reaching and building a consumer base. Are you better off constant once you've decided that this, this platform feels like the comfortable one, the authentic one for me, are you better off concentrating on one of those major platforms or trying to, to blanket all three? I mean, it depends on your resources. If it's just you and you're starting out and you're taking those first steps, I would pick one and go narrow and deep. And I think that in all of life, like I think, you know, you make in, in most businesses, you make 80% of your volume on 20% of your business. So like you really want to center in on one lane. So yes, if you're just starting out and it's just you and you're like, I want to get my message out there, be authentic to that. Try to build a community base on one platform and then you can go from there. But it's not great to sort of spread yourself too thin in any aspect of life. So let me let me ask you this. When you're you're using social media, do you get feedback that tells you this is working or this is not working? That something has gone viral, something has not. How do you know that one platform or another is actually working better for you and your products, your line? The best part about social media, and you know, and the worst, is that you will hear from fans. You will hear exactly what people want to see and what they don't like. And I like the positive feedback. I also appreciate the negative feedback because it's super helpful. But I think that um, you have to really, like some really great tips is what, what are you trying to sell, what demo? So that will really help you focus on what lane to go down. And again, one platform of a, 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 at a time. And while you're concentrating on one platform, it's important to keep those others, even if you're not going deep on them, to keep them up to date. Nobody wants to see a post from two years ago. Just make sure you have something that's up to date for your audience and engage. If somebody writes to you, write back. That's how you build a platform and fans that want to speak back and ask if you don't know if you should do the purple one or the pink one in whatever form that is. Do yeah. a poll. Get get response. Ask for a response. And then, you know, just doing, just asking young people out there who are in your life, like my bonus children, I'll always go to them and say, is this cool? Is that cool? What's the coolest thing? Because depending on your demo, you know what the, like we were trying to do items recently for Emily in Paris and they were saying, what are teens wanting these days? And I said, why don't we just ask teens? Like ask your demographic. It doesn't have to be this formal thing. Ask someone who knows someone and say, what's the hottest thing right now? So I think it's really about, you nailed it, just working really hard being really passionate about your brand. And then if you're afraid of social media because it's this overwhelming um, platform, just really getting to know one lane and connecting with your fans. You know, people talk about going viral. In other words, having something on social media that becomes a, a phenomenon in and of itself. D do you ever, as a creator, Jill, start off thinking, I'm going to try and come up with something that's going to go viral? or? Does it just happen uh, organically by accident? Or you, you get my drift there, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it happens organically. Like something will happen in the moment, which is why capturing behind the scenes footage is always great. You never know what's going to go viral. Or sometimes, you know, first of all, going viral isn't everything, but it's great because it will, it doesn't necessarily lead to conversion, but it leads to attention, which you really can't measure the ROI on because you want people to know about your brand. But I think being authentic is more of a priority than going viral, but, and being yourself, obviously, and all these points are super important. But in terms of going viral, there are certain ways to do something. So if you have an idea that you want to execute. Like for example, yesterday for this Emily in Paris activation, we lit the Empire State Building up pink. And the Empire State Building has a social media where they take themselves, like they really are in on the joke and they have the Empire State Building with a voice that actually talks. And a lot of their TikToks go viral because they took something that's institutional and the, what, the Empire State Building, the iconic building, 
and they are in on the joke. So I think it's important to know what you have, know what you can do. And then, yes, if you could go viral and bring attention to your brand, awesome. But that doesn't make for a necessary conversion. So I think there's a combo platter there. So Joe, last night as we were talking about this, she said, you, you know, I think what you should do is is look at some of Jill's social media. And I thought, well, now there's an idea. Maybe I should do that. Uh, it's like, duh. So I Today's did. the day to look. Today's the I, day to look. You know, and, and you have one of the lines is like a bridesmaid's line of robes and things that you would wear at a wedding and, and other things. But the thing that stood out to me was the volume of content that you create uh, in, I guess we were looking at Instagram. How time consuming is it to create that content? And do you do it on your own or do you have now do you have people who I'm sure when you started you were doing it by yourself. But do you have people who help you with it? I do, but I mostly do it by myself because when you have a brand and it's your brand and you feel the most passionate about it, I do have people who help when I have a special event. Like last night I had an activation at my apartment and I had people there. But when you're POV, when you're point of view and you're so passionate about your brand, nobody can tell your story better. So I really took it upon myself to learn a little bit about what works. And you'll mostly see my stories, like if you look now, and last night was such a triumph. Um, we had such a great activation, so if you want to check it out. But, but you know, looking from your point of view and capturing something, I think will relate to the fans how passionate you are, and then we'll get them excited about it. Was, so, was this the Shop the Scene activation, or what was yes, that? Yes, yes, yes. We did an Emily in Paris where we're bringing in-show brands to life. And so, you know, you'll see a lot on a lot of my stories. But, you know, so what should I post? Behind the scenes content, you'll see that. Product specific and praise. If you're posting a product, make sure you have a link there with a swipe up so that you're not yeah. giving friction to the consumer. Live videos, always great. It doesn't always have to be so formal, non-business contact that it, co content that's conversational. Again, we talked about taking a poll. And again, those shoppable links, less friction for the consumer will lead to higher conversion. So always make it easy. Um, you know, when you're doing problems. I've solutions. always wondered about those live videos because I, I see them and I'm inevitably frustrated because I've just missed the start or it's just ended. Uh, are they, so how do you get out the word that you're going to have a live video or is it just, just spontaneous? You know, what's great about the live video is getting the word out, but also you'll see a lot of people watch it after. It gives you the option to save it as a post. And so I suggest always doing that and tagging the partners or the people in there because then people could watch it. You'll see, like you might only have on a live video, you're like, I don't wanna go live because I don't have that many followers and you can see the amount of followers, but don't worry about it. I've done lives where I've had 30, 40, 50 people. And then when you post it, if it's a great interview and there's great stuff in there, you can have tens of thousands of views. So you really have to sort of be a little humble and, you know, not take yourself so seriously and really <laughs> highlight what you what you're proud of, because building a business startups are so hard, no matter your platform. So I give all, right. all the the faith and all the um, praise to entrepreneurs out there because I know how hard it is. It's just like stick with it.